So, I just got through uh, cutting up a bunch of bunch of meat that Jason and them had out the ranch. Uh, they're gonna be gone for a while, so they brought it in. And uh, I said, well, heck, I'll, uh, I'll just make the jerky out of it. So, I mixed up a concoction here that I'm gonna be marinating my uh, meat in. Let's see. Tastes just like it ought to. So, I wanna pour in this stuff into this bag. Oh yeah. Look at that. This is gonna be marinating in this. I'm gonna leave it probably a day or so, at least 24 hours. Let it soak. I'm gonna put it inside the refrigerator and let it get good and cold and soak real good. And then Jason left this uh they left their uh, dehydrator here and he said might as well use it while we're gone. And I said, well. Okay, I was gonna do it in the uh, in the um, actual uh, air fryer or the uh, oven. oven that we have, but I thought, eh, if they left it here and that's what it's for, might as well use it. So we're gonna have us some good jerky. That's probably about five to ten pounds of meat, and. Uh, might end up with maybe one pound of jerky. <laughs> so anyway, that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this, you see, it's all gonna be really good. It's good, good meat. I cut my meat with the grain, not against the grain, because I don't like my jerky tender and it just falls apart when I eat it. I like to chew on it gnaw on it and I get mine I'm gonna put a, a bunch of black pepper on here and maybe some red pepper flakes when I put it in the dehydrator so that uh, it'd be cooked on there real good I put some pepper flakes in here so it all has some good flavor but uh yeah I'm gonna put this inside the refrigerator for a good 24 hours and then we'll break out that uh, dehydrator and get after it so I'll talk to you a little later and uh, we'll see what happens. Well, what I'm going to do right now, uh, this meat has been marinating uh, a good 24 hours. Um, what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to lay out a little bit on the uh, some wax paper or some uh, freezer paper here. And, uh, just let it sit for a little bit and then I can go ahead and dust it with some uh, pepper, you know, ground pepper. And I have, you know, that, uh, I guess it's a light granular, you know, it's not big grains of, of pepper, it's that fine, fine pepper. I want to kind of coat them a little bit in it so that it, they, you know, also give a little bite because some of that bigger pepper will start falling off and uh, of course very good to get at the bottom of the thing too and eat that but uh, yeah I coat them a little bit with the, the pepper finer pepper a little bit of pepper flakes and things like that be good so let's keep getting this stuff out Probably ought to just pour it into a... Well, I'm gonna use a colander. I'm gonna move some of these dirty dishes. I guess I should have done that before, but hey. I think the dishwasher was full, that's why I didn't do it. Anyway, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna pour this down in here and it'll start getting some of that sauce drain off of them so they won't be so wet 
And when I lay them out over here, it, uh, it turns off a little bit, be a lot better. That way I can just lay the pieces out and do it quicker and dust them. I don't want this to take all day. I'm ready to eat this stuff. I think it's going to be pretty good. Jason likes those little tiny thin pieces where they're almost crunchy. But, uh, I mean, I like it okay too, but I tell you what, if you get you a good piece of jerky that you can sit there and wait alone for 30 minutes to an hour on one piece, that's the kind of jerky I'm talking about. So, what I'm going to do is probably get the first tray going at, at least on there. But, strips of meat are probably a quarter inch thick or so. Uh, I like them like that because when they uh, they dehydrate out real well, uh, they just seem to just have better flavor, particularly when you uh, marinate them. But you yeah, don't have to. They're just plain dried meats. Okay. I've never used this uh, dehydrator. I had one of those old dehydrators you bought back in the 70s. I think it was called a Ronson or something like that. And uh, I used to wear that thing out. And uh, we'd go on a trip. I'd make a big old uh, brown paper bag full of them. And they're good and hot, you know, the kids. They'd all tear up and everything when they'd eat them, but they couldn't stop. They just kept chewing them and getting more and more and more. So that's what we would take on trips. And they would munch on them while, while we were riding. That's tray number one. Okay, as you can see, I uh, Got all these other trays done. This is the last of the bunch, uh, actually, that I can fit on this tray. I still have about, probably about a pound in here. Uh, I'm gonna let that just keep on marinating. And maybe tomorrow or the next day, I'll throw that on and uh, finish, finish the cooking. I thought about doing it in my, uh, my oven, uh, and, uh, I thought, no, I'll just go ahead and just put it on this dehydrator and give this dehydrator a, uh, a review. Yeah, as you know, I was talking earlier about how I cut my nail guy meat or deer or whatever meat I'm going to use is always cut it with the grain. I like it where it's chewable, not where it crumbles. So, you know, to each his own, but uh, that's the way I do mine. And, uh, oh, Jason, he, uh, he doesn't like a lot of spice, but, uh, anyway, his jerky was like chewing on candy. candy. I like it. it. Yeah. She liked it. I mean, it, it had a fairly good flavor. It was just, it was like chewing on candy. It was so thin and chewy, you know. And, uh, 
it wasn't as crisp as what he wanted. So uh, some of it was, but some of it was still chewy and kind of stick to your teeth, kind of like a, I don't know, what would it be like, Mom? Peanut brittle? Well, yeah. almost like a piece of brittle where it's just so sticky. But um, anyway, set this aside. Hands a little wash here. Those little Runson uh, dehydrators, you just plug it in and it's going. You don't have any sets. This one does. So, go ahead and make the lid for this thing. I asked Jason, I said, well, is there any type of a, a uh, ventilation like on these little old Ronson that we had. You could sit there and spin the, the things and it, it would regulate how much airflow you have going through. But I guess this one does it on its own. So let's, let's see if we can get power to I guess that's figuring it out, dummy me. So it's 158 degrees and it's gonna dehydrate for 12 hours and it's counting. Okay, well, I was doubting myself, so what did I do? The unmanly thing? <laughs> I went and got the directions and it says uh, beef, poultry, or fish, five to six hours drying time between 150 and 158 degrees. So, and it says also slice them a quarter inch thick. That's about what I did. So, I am going to change the time. Let's see if it starts counting down. There we go. That's going to be for six hours. So, what time is it right now? Woo! It's noon. It's noonish. I might be eating this stuff by six o'clock this afternoon. I'm gonna have to get me a. I'm gonna have to open up me a can of caffeine-free diet coke. Chaw me some of this stuff, so I won't be bothering mom about. Hey, what's for supper? Be chewing on that, and my old belly be really big and swollen then. Man, will it be good? Well, it's been probably a yeah an hour and a half or so uh, since I put this on, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, rotate some of the trays so it it'll, it'll dry more evenly. I know the bottom always going to cook faster than the top, so I'm just going to rotate them out. Uh, I don't know if this machine was designed to uh, not have to do that. I don't know. Uh, I'm just used to dehydrating by rotating the system. Before I was rudely interrupted by my camera uh, running out of room, I was moving the trays around, uh, rotating them out. As you can see, these are already starting to dehydrate very well. So I'm going to move them to the top. set them back on, completely rotated them. There we go. Completely rotated them. All these other ones that are up here that are, oh wee, those are going to be good. Uh, just let it continue on. Four and a half hours. Should be good. We hope. Well, as you can see, I uh, 
down to uh, got the other meat that was in the refrigerator and finished it and put it in here it's finishing up it was just about two trays left uh, I had this bag completely full and overflowing uh, you can see it's full of full of stuff in there and uh, anyway I put several bags away for the boys so I wouldn't eat it all uh, that way I can share it with them but uh, yeah mm. That's some jerky there. I had some earlier. I know I chewed on that thing for 45 minutes or so. You know, it just keeps chewing it's so good. It's got a lot of good flavor to it. Sweetness, saltiness, peppery, chewy, tough, stringy. See, that's what you call jerky whenever you can uh, pull it and it strings like that. <laughs> That's jerky. So, just gotta go another 35 minutes or so and then I wanna finish it up, clean up the machine. I think this machine is pretty good. It's, it's very easy to use. Um, I know when I first did the trays earlier, uh, the other day, I had set it and it was 158 degrees, uh, that's what it defaulted as, and it defaulted at 12 hours. And you know what? That was about as long as what I really needed to use it for. I, I pulled out the directions and, and read those, and it said for the beef or chicken or pork or wherever you were going to dry, they said five to six hours at 158 degrees. No. It's more like what the default hit. 158 degrees is about 12 hours for all those trays to be full of about an eight to a quarter inch pieces of jerky. Because a quarter inch piece of jerky is going to shrink way down. But yeah. That's some good stuff there, let me tell you. It's got pepper on it, it's got pepper flakes in it. It's got pepper embedded in it. Mm, 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 mm. I'm gonna enjoy this. If I was a, if I really like to drink beer, this would be a good thing to drink with ice cold beer. I just don't like the flavor of it. But, a good old Coke. Man, stuff burns as it goes down, man, it's good. Combination. Just can't beat it, man. So, anyway, I weighed uh, this bag full a while ago, and it was pretty near two pounds. And uh, that's pretty accurate because uh, I used her scale that she used to do her mailings with, so it was pretty accurate. That was pretty good. I have about six, seven pounds of meat total. End up with about two pounds of good jerky. Can't beat that. All right, guys. Just thought I'd share with you how I do my jerky. We'll talk at you later.